TX Turk channel. Alright guys, your King of Fits and Valentine VX Turk. Like the new look? I just got me some braids. I'm gonna get them redone because they don't look as good as the other stuff. But yes, I got a new look now to my hairstyle. So, we're gonna be talking about Final Fantasy VII since it's relevant because the remake is gonna come out is gonna come out next year. So, it's still gonna be a relevant subject. Plus, Final Fantasy VII is my personal face, personal biases. Also, this is brought to you by Think Geek. Now you can. Cool cans with um, Think Geek uh, Star Wars uh, cool can cooler products. This has been in the car for at least a couple for over an hour, and this cools it right back up. So go to buy Think Geek products. Anyways, let's get to the video. To, uh, Fifteen things you didn't know. About Final Fantasy 7, let me, the ultimate Final Fantasy guru, tell you all the 15 stuff you didn't know about Final Fantasy 15, and I put them all on the list. One, Lucretia Crescent has a clone in the mobile game during the service of the Lost Episode. If anyone's played the Lost Episodes or watched the walkthrough to Grimoire Valentine's YouTube channel that plays all the mobile Final Fantasy games that are in Japan, the Dirge of Cerberus Lost Episode mobile game came out the same time Final Fantasy 7 Dirge of Cerberus came out as all the stuff that they cut out in the original uh, Dirge of Cerberus. That's what they're called the Lost Episodes. And look, there's actually a woman who looks like Lucretia. Now most people will say that's you know, Vincent and Lucretia's daughter because she has shorter hair than the actual Lucretia and her hair is down. But no, you know, that, that that's actually untrue. Lucretia actually cloned herself. To because there's just you know to help out Vincent because no she knowingly she knows that Hojo's a dangerous person and you're gonna have to make some backup plans with Hojo around so yes uh Lucretia made a clone the only weird thing is I don't care what you say I still believe Lucretia's clone is still alive even today so I think you know I don't see why Vincent Valentine could not find Lucretia's clone and hook up with her if Lucretia's stuck in a crystal. But, Tetsuo Norma has sometimes a problem with writing stuff. I love Tetsuo Norma's work, don't get me wrong. I just gotta criticize it. He does not know how to finish the stuff he has. Or if he does, it looks... It looks like an unfinished story. Even though now that's no longer canon. That's probably another reason why uh, the compilation of Final Fantasy VII is no longer canon. Because, you know, some places are, you know, some things are... You know, even in Before Crisis, were not written really well. But, you know, hopefully in the remake, he writes this very well and complete it. But I think the, if I if I can request anything from the compilation, I'd like to see Lucretia's clone, at least. So Vincent can get a happy ending in the Final Fantasy VII remake, just like everybody else. So, so everybody else could have their own happy ending in the game. So this is a different game. Number two, Vincent Valentine was... To have a Reaper Scythe and originally was a horror researcher. And that's how Vincent was originally supposed to get chaos inside of him. But they just thought this was a bad idea. It kind of makes sense because you had to make the characters relevant to the story. The story of Final Fantasy VII is about Cloud and Sephiroth and, you know, the planet and stuff like that. So adding a new story mode would kind of detract from the original story mode. So I'm kind of glad that they changed Vincent Valentine to being an uh, ex-Turk from the Shimmer Corporation who was friend who, who fell in love with Sephiroth's real mother. That would make that made a better story than what the original story was. So I'm kind of glad that the story changed into something much better that fits within the plot. So Good on Square Enix to put the changes. Plus, I like the gun better than I do the scythe. Because, I mean, sure we got a gun arm for Barrett, but everybody else was using swords, spears, and and one gun arm, and then just fist. It'd be, it'd be make it more diverse if you have someone who plainly uses a gun. So, um, yeah. Good, good, good on Square Enix to change that. Good on Square Enix to change that. Cloud was the one to best and beat Sephiroth during the Nibelheim burning arc. 
Now Sephiroth was, I mean, Cloud was never, Cloud was never an actual soldier. You know, Cloud was actually a never, was never a, the real soldier. That's true, but he still was the one who beat Sephiroth. Not even Zack was able to beat Sephiroth. They even know how strong Zack was, he was on equal footing with Sephiroth during that time, but he lost the battle somehow. Sephiroth overpowered him, but Cloud would feel with a lot of anger. And this is where it, I guess it comes from Star Wars because when Luke's get when Luke gets angry, he's able to beat Vader really easily. It's kind of the whole same thing. Cloud lost his mother, his friends, everybody that he knew with Nibelheim to Sephiroth and hurt Zack and Tifa, so he had enough. So with his anger, he took Zack's sword. Uh, stab it right into Sephiroth and survive Sephiroth, Sephiroth's stab and then threw Sephiroth back into the life stream. Of course, that's the original game canon, not the Crisis Core. So, we're going to be tough. So, pretty much the only thing that makes sense to this is the, the Final Fantasy VII OVA Last Order. But yes, Sephiroth was bested by Cloud. Cloud was the one who defeated number five, Elfie was the leader of Avalanche before Barrett. And this is why I wish Al Elfie would come back. She's from cr before Crisis, but she would have been a good character because Elfie was powerful, even stronger than Barrett was. Like, she fought Sephiroth with one hand, one one combat. And Sephiroth, even though he, this is soldier Sephiroth, he, Sephiroth was still like the strongest soldier. He survived, and she, and she survived all of Sephiroth's strikes and was able to best him. The very first female character to be badass before Tifa was. In fact, I'd say, I'd say one of the best Final Fantasy VII female characters of all time. The original leader of Avalanche, Elfie. Alright, number six, and this is for people who have not played the original Final Fantasy VII. If you played the original Final Fantasy VII, do not pay attention to this. Dine, or Din, whatever you want to call him, was the second person to have a gun arm besides Barrett. You know, he was the second person to have a gun arm besides Barrett. So there was two people with gun arms. Barrett and his friend because they both lost their limbs in Shinra's attack on Corel, Which made Barrett look like a traitor, which he was not. It also caused Dine to lose his uh, insanity. Thus, Barrett had to deal with him and beat him. Sad part of it is Dine took his own life in that one battle. But Dine was the second person to have a gun arm besides Barrett. Alright. Number seven. Cloud was voiced by Titus's voice actor during the tragic death of Zack due to Steve Burton not having a high enough voice. Now, Steve Burton played Cloud through Crisis Core, Advent Children, you know, Kingdom Hearts, and played, and, and, and you know, and in the Final Fantasy VII Remake. But, you know, um, he, he didn't have enough high enough voice to have the scream that Cloud was supposed to have when losing Zack in Crisis Core. So they called Titus' voice actor due to the scream. So, um, yeah, that's number seven. Number eight, Kingdom, Heart, uh, Kingdom Hearts 1, Lance Bass from NSYNC plays Sephiroth's voice. So, you know, the, the, the guy from NSYNC, Lance Bass, because he's also a voice actor besides being a musician. He also does voices. He did Sephiroth's original voice in Kingdom Hearts 1, which I got to say, it was not bad. It was pretty good, but he didn't have very much dialogue. So, that could have been change. Number 9. Urgeth of uh, Final Fantasy VII was, ha, has had a fighting game before the Dissidia series. And it was called Urgets. Urgets was a co collaboration between Square Enix and Namco. Now, Square Enix bought out Namco's Urgets. And then when they bought Namco's Urgets, because they had their original characters... Because they do so well. So Square Enix thought, you know what? We could franchise Final Fantasy VII characters a lot better if we did this. So Square Enix bought out the arcade Urgets from Namco. And had the original characters but also put the pop of their Final Fantasy VII characters. Like Cloud, Sephiroth, Tifa, Yuffie, and Vincent, and Zack as a secret character for their fighting game. And it plays just like... Um, it kind of plays like the, one of the WWE games from the N64 era. I would recommend playing that game, you know, 
It's a really good game. Now, number 10, Cloud has became the poster boy for Sony alongside Crash and Spyro. Because Final Fantasy 7 was the hottest selling game on the PlayStation 1. So, of course, he'd be the poster boy. He's pretty much like the link for Sony. You know, n number 11, in the Japanese import version of the game only, uh, of the import game, only Diamond Weapon existed. All the other we weapons did not exist. Only Diamond Weapon exists in the import of Final Fantasy VII Import. Because, so, I mean, they put the other weapons a little bit later to make the game go longer. But the original port was the Japanese port, so... They had an idea how they're going to have everything different. Number 12, it was hard to plan the villain in the early stages because the first villain was the Shinra Company, then came out the concept of Sephiroth. Number 13, I mean 12, no, that was 12. Number 13, Sephiroth and Eris were to be brother and sister, but they scrapped this idea and changed it. And you know what? This will actually be a lot better. Did I skip anything else? Um, I think I might skip something else. Hold up. Hold up. I'm okay. I, just, I think I skipped number four. Number. So I'm gonna go back to number four. I'm sorry about that. Sephiroth has the most ex, uh, most merch and the most expensive merch due to popularity can sit in the game popularity in the game community because Sephiroth is known as the the best villain in, in video game history. Maybe from Kingdom Hearts or Final Fantasy VII, I don't know. But Sephiroth's ex merch is the most expensive merch and has the most merch out of any character in Final Fantasy. Because, you know, he's pretty much the, he's pretty much the poster boy villain for all video game villains back in the 90s. So, you know, and, all, and, all, and, he's all, and you know what, he's earned that title. He's earned that title. Sephiroth is my personal favorite villain in Final Fantasy VII, so... You know, he's earned that title. I got lots of Sephiroth merchandise, but they're the most expensive out of every single merchandise. Now I'll go back to number 14, Lucretia Crescent and Althania are sisters. And that's actually confirmed. That's not fan theory. That's actually confirmed. They're both, you know, that's why Hojo got interested in Lucretia, finding out that she's related to Althania. Which, this is where they they had the original concept of Sephiroth and Eris were brother and sister. Instead, they changed it where Sephiroth and Eris are actually cousins. But Sephiroth does not know that, so... Whoops. Sephiroth killed his cousin. In cold blood. Whoops. See on Square Enix for that. Number 15. The character from Crisis Core, which he was from originally from Georgia Service, which... In Dirge of Service, he was called G. Both G and Genesis from Crisis Core, the same character, was created and voiced by the Japanese pop star Got. You know, because it made the game localized. And Final Fantasy games are about localization. Like I said, Final Fantasy games are just like shonen animes. It's pretty much a cash cow. So, if that's how come Final Fantasy always have... Commercial uh, have commercials and ads with cars or ads with you know like Ariana Grande in their Brave of Vexus game and stuff like that. You know whether they, it's the English or Japanese pop stars, they always try to collaborate with English and Japanese pop stars, either for music or either for art or either for characters. And for the character, not only God played music for the Dirge of Server soundtrack, which he has a music. In fact. Gok even made a concert where he's dressed up in his Genesis getup for one concert to advertise the Dirge of Servers game in Japan. But that's how much money Square Enix, you know, Square Enix wants to make money. That's all their whole MO is to make money. And it's pretty good that they did that because even though people don't listen to Gok, he's a ja Gok is pretty much the Japanese version of Michael Jackson. So... If you have an uh, A-lister like Gokt on your team, your games are going to get money. Even though people thought Dirge of Service was a terrible game. you got to admit, you got to admit the soundtrack of Dirge of Service was cool and badass and edgy. you got to admit that the soundtrack to Dur Final Fantasy VII Dirge of Service was amazing because of Gokt. Even though it was produced by some other people, Gokt had two songs on the soundtrack, which was really good. And made the game really well. And you know, that's how they do it. Square Enix is all about getting their stuff out there. That's why they have Ariana Grande and Brave of X. So, 
May the crystal be with you. And those are 15 facts about Final Fantasy VII you didn't even know. Don't forget to like, subscribe.